Hey everybody, I'm Lou and I'm Kurt and welcome back to the breakdown. How you like that? How you like them apples? I'm gonna make you come right in hot. You don't even know what's going on. <laughs> well, how did you like your turkey? Oh, it was so good. I am gonna tell you a very interesting story. Turkey was great. Honestly, as I was thinking, I literally am like cutting the white meat and I'm like, what is Luke saying? Of course you can taste the difference in the white meat. That's what my my mom said too. She corrected you as well? Yeah. <laughs> She did. She did. She also, um, oh, I think she was, she was listening to the episode. She also wants us to, uh, wanted, wants to make sure that I cover that we do have a very special Christmas breakfast. Okay. Which we, we do. That is true. I was just going to wait till Christmas, but. Your mom um, never has to worry. Like in yeah. the, in the, uh, how I say, in the spectrum of people that I highly esteem, <laughs> your mom is there. Dulce is there, man. Same for me. I so. I love her. I love when she talks to my wife. I mm. think it's great. So that's awesome. <laughs> she's she. I have no qualms, and I'm I'm pretty sure she's a great cook. And oh, baker. she is. Yeah, absolutely. So yep. I, I'm I'm sure you have something special on Christmas, but we don't even get. To t I don't get to hear it yet, right? Because you have to wait until you tell me that week. I think we talked about it last year, but I can tell you now. I oh, I'm going to ask you every single yeah, it's, year. It's waffles. We have that's waffles right. with sausage Ooh. and and strawberries and whipped cream and all that stuff. Oh, it's, it's delicious! Wow. So. Hey, so you had some family actually come in this year. We did. That's really yeah. cool. So my sister, uh, Tatiana, she lives in Kentucky with her husband, Gabriel. Awesome. Uh, he's in uh, urology residency in Louisville, Kentucky. So they wow. live down there. So they, they were able to come up this year for Thanksgiving. Um, and then my other sister, Brianna, she and her husband, Dexley, live in Providence. They have a little church over there. Yeah. And they were over with um, their son, Malachi, who is the star of the family right Ooh, now. Ooh, yeah. Malachi is the first grandbaby? He is the first, wow. yes. Wow. So, How old is Malachi? He is nine months, a little over nine months. Wow. Yep, definitely the star. Very cute. So it was good. Very handsome. So. <laughs> you enjoy being an uncle? Oh, absolutely. Super fun. It is tons of so, fun, dude. That's yeah. great. So you were saying something about turkey. Yeah, turkey was great. We had a good time. Um, got a little sick off of the second turkey. We actually made two oh. turkeys. And I don't quite know what happened, but uh, man, it was, it was a little brutal. And it made me rethink my whole turkey spiel. In fact, the next day, my daughter said to me, Dad... I don't want to have turkey for a long time. <laughs> and usually, usually, even though turkey is coming out of our ears at Thanksgiving, we're not turning it down, you know? But so she's, she needs a little break. Everyone needs a little hiatus from the turkey. But uh, we don't do well with ham. Nobody really likes ham. So yeah. I got to find something. We made some steak last night. It was great, but. That's awesome. Yep. Foodie. We're, this is not the food breakdown, although that would be tons of fun because I'm a total foodie. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. So, hey, good to be uh, back in the weekend. We're coming off of Thanksgiving. Service was amazing. Once again, great to hear from the Fuentes family. I love those guys. Uh, we've been connected with them in some different circles over the past several years. Cool. So that was truly wonderful to see our friends again and to hear about them. And just one of those families, like if you've been in this area, even if you weren't running in like AG circles or whatever, you probably would have encountered Jason and NG mm. and their kids. Just a great family. Really interesting to hear about the islands over there. I mean, every time yeah. Jason tells me that, I'm like, what are we talking about? That's amazing. All those islands and just the the non-reached populations. It's it's really wild. It, it kind of, I think sometimes when we sit here in Western culture, um, we sometimes take for granted the amount of churches that we have on any given street and how we're still predominantly Catholic in this region, mm. or maybe we would qualify yeah. ourselves as Christians. We we don't, it's really good to get outside of our framework sometimes. And, and you love to do mission work as no, well. No, I do. I do. I think it's important. Uh, and, and you can do that even even here. So you can apply the same principle, you know, here at home, but it's the idea of every person has a story mm. and God wants to be part of that story. Yeah. So when you talk to someone, you engage with them from the perspective of what is your story? Yeah. And as a believer asking the Holy Spirit, like, how do I cooperate with the story that, that the father wants to write for this person? Mm. And then in people groups, so when you travel abroad, you also see that not only like the individual um, story is still, it still applies when yeah, you talk yeah. to someone individually, 
But then you can also see like, well, what's the story for the people of this region? It's good. And, and how, what are the different dynamics at play in this region? Mm. And then when we understand that we live from a spiritual reality, we also know that um, Satan is also at work in a unique way among those people as well. Yeah, yeah. And so when you, but when you look through it through that lens, mm. then it, it, things become a lot more interesting. And it's not just a cross-cultural experience. It's like a cross spiritual experience because you're you're going through all the layers it's really good you're saying that and as you're talking i'm thinking a lot about uh, what jason and ng shared and then just as i've heard missionaries over the years we tend to make this line in the sand and, and when we hear the statements of jason and ng talking about their ministry and some of the the demonic experiences and the physical healings mm -hmm. we have this line in our mind our heads go tilt and we say okay that makes sense because that's foreign mission work. Right. And we tend to say, hey, we don't see those things in America. We've talked about this on mm -hmm. our show a lot before. And uh, we actually see those things right here in our very own church. Yeah. You know, we see the deliverances, mm -hmm. we see the healings, and and we have to be careful sometimes. I think number one with what our confession is, like why don't we see that more here or we don't see that yeah. more here. And yes. number two to to actually I think what happens is there's sort of like this expectation, like, okay, if I go overseas on a missions trip, I know that God will meet me there. I'm going to see some stuff. Yeah, I'm going right. to see some stuff. Yeah. I wanted to say this because when we went down to Salem, we were working with a, a couple and they're an awesome couple. And they were saying like, hey, listen, one of the things that we learned to do in our training is we put God on the spot, no matter where we go. What do you need? Just like we're going to read about with, with Blind Bartimaeus. Correct. What is it you need? What do you want? You know? And I think that sometimes we're afraid to do that in our natural environments right here where we're comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's that's why, and, and we'll get to it in the message, yeah. but it really comes down to the person of Jesus yeah. and, and why Jesus came and what has he done in your own life? Because you might, but as you, as you brought up, some people will say, and I've heard things like this. Uh, oh, you know, if you go to a foreign country, you're going to, that's where all the miracles happen. That's where like, they are really moving in spiritual warfare and they fight it. And it's like, really like, you know, right in your face. If you stop and pause and look at just your own life, mm. you will see those elements at play in your own life. It's true. So it's important that we stop. And, and that's where I think, especially living in a more comfortable mm -hmm. environment compared mm -hmm. to um what what jason brought up ab about indonesia and and because he, he, he talked a lot about suffering yeah i was going to bring that up next and Absolutely. they suffer in a very blatant way yeah we also do suffer here too mm -hmm. it's just it's different and, yeah. and and the comfort and the ease of our life i think can numb us out to it so true um but if you stop and pause then you get to see all the things that God has done for you. But you mm -hmm. have to stop and, and pause and, and give thanks to him and, and recount all those, those things. It's, it's really true. And even coming off the heels of Thanksgiving and moving into Christmas, it's such a rapid fire right. machine gun season. It's like, okay, Thanksgiving, we did that. Now the next thing, exactly. Christmas. And it's like, I really love that we're taking this time and what you're bringing up. We mm -hmm. really need to pause. I yeah. was uh, in, in a meeting this morning and some time of worship. And I was really taken aback by what I sensed the Lord communicating to me. You know, I was talking a little bit about the pain and the suffering on the heels of what Jason was talking about. It's like, God, like, but why, why, why all this, you know, I'm still coming around to the same questions. Mm -hmm. Why all this suffering? Like, yeah. what is the point of the pain and the suffering? And I understand what the scriptures say about it, producing character and yeah. hope and a proven testimony of faithfulness that's worth more than precious gold. And the Lord just really touched my heart. And I think that's the thing is when we have honest dialogue with the Lord and we're not afraid, like just when we sit across from friends and we're having honest mm -hmm. dialogue with the Lord, we don't have to be afraid that he's going to chastise us if we're really trying to understand. Right. And the Lord, I just looked down at my thumbs and the Lord just reminded me like how precious this life is mm -hmm. that while this life, let's say 85 to 120, you know, I'm going for 122. So 85 to 122 years, right? Compared to the weight of glory, like Paul right. says, eternity with the Lord. If we have to suffer for a little while, as Peter says, it, it's incomparable in terms of what we're going to be experiencing. Because I think sometimes when we mm -hmm. wear this flesh, we're like, God, I, I'm just kind of tired of suffering, whatever that may mean, yeah. wherever you're coming yeah. from, right? Yeah. 
just kind of tired of suffering. And it's like, well, wait a minute. This is temporary. This light affliction right. in comparison, like Paul says, to eternity. Mm-hmm. Man, we're going to have just to be born and to be yeah. saved mm-hmm. is a gift because we are guaranteed that eternity with the Lord. Right. On the other side. Right, right. And that's where no matter what we do to mm-hmm. try to avoid suffering in this life or, or negativity <laughs> yeah. or pain, it's baked into our broken world. Yeah, you know, it the is. The Bible says like the world groans yeah. Yeah. as in pains of childbirth. And what we're really longing for yeah. um, is heaven. Mm. So you can, you can, that's why I think we can get so, dis, um, we get caught up in like these visions of what our life should look like. Yes. And, and um, a lot of them are good things from God. Yep. Um, but again, they're just reflections of, of, you know, the real thing, which yeah. is found in Jesus and, and, and in heaven, but Satan can cause our minds to get locked in on these things. I know. And, and we're like, yeah, I just got to get to that. And then I'm going to, my life will be easier, but it's, it's not true. Cause you're no. going to achieve that. Yep. And then you're going to find, oh, it's, that wasn't the thing. The hell, like no. I need something else. And, and really what you're longing for is heaven. Yeah. You're longing for that connection. You're, right. you're absolutely right. Hey, listen, if you're, if you're listening to this, and you're saying, man, I'm really not a good sufferer. Welcome to the club. No, I don't think that, anything <laughs> really is. really good. Nobody's really good at this. In fact, I was so, I don't, I don't think encouraged is the right word, but I was so taken and blessed by um, second service. Uh, Jason had brought up a friend, a, a young man who gave his life to mm-hmm. the Lord and went back home, was, was beaten and chastised. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he talked about kind of like, there's no other way to go. Like he, he it probably wasn't what he expected, you know? But there's no other way to go. You got to go with Jesus. Right. Once you have that revelation, you can't turn. Right. Just like Jesus's disciples. Yeah. So they say it because he's yeah. just like, where are you guys going to go? And they said, well, where, where else can we where go? Where can we go? You have the words of life. Once you've received Jesus and, and you've, you've tasted and seen, you can't untaste it. No. And, and you know that this is the only real thing. And I think if you're struggling, we want to encourage you to hold on. I was just yeah. reading this morning. Um, at the tail end of Matthew, as Jesus is sort of, we, sort of going through this this whole account, and he's saying, "Listen, many are going to turn away," mm-hmm. and it just reminded me that that is the goal of the enemy. Yeah. If he didn't, if he didn't keep you from accepting this beautiful salvation, this beautiful gift, man, he will just keep pushing mm-hmm. in an attempt to get you turned away from Jesus. Right. But you got to endure. He who endures to the end, the scripture says, Jesus said, will be sa- saved. Yeah. Paul says, you have need of endurance. We need to pray that endurance in our life. So if we're finding ourselves getting weary, like John said last week, Pastor yep. John shared, yep. Galatians getting weary and well-doing, like, hold on, hold on. You will reap if you do not lose heart. And how important it is for us at whatever place, because I like what you're bringing up, whether we're comparing miracles or suffering. And you're, mm-hmm. you're bringing a great point. We have our own suffering that we have here in this yeah, nation. You know? we, are, we live in a broken world. It's, it's yeah. so it's true. Just, it's going to look different mm-hmm. for each person, too. That's really good. Um, but yeah, just, just to reiterate, going back and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to show you how God has moved supernaturally in your life. Oh, yeah. Uh, because Satan wants you to think, yeah, see, you haven't, you haven't really received the power of mm. God in your life. Mm. But you have. You, you really have. have. And you, you have to. The Holy Spirit will show that to you. And you. But to do that, you have to stop, pause, take stock, and be thankful. That, well, that's just it right there. You just nailed it. So this is, where, this is my whole meditation this morning. First Thessalonians 5.18, giving thanks in all things. Mm-hmm. This is where we come back to all the time. This is the will of God. Not that we give thanks for all mm-hmm. things, but right. even in suffering, in we can give thanks things. in all things. And I think that thankful heart, not just a, hey, we did Thanksgiving Day. Now let's move forward to Christmas. No, let's have this posture of constant gratitude. And I'm sure we've heard this over the years. If you're if you are struggling, be good to sit down and write a list of the little things you're thankful for. I was practicing with my daughter in the car. And, you know, you will probably find maybe you'll hit 20 or 30 or you might find you're really stretching. But when you go back to just asking the Lord, God, what do I have to be grateful for? He will show you. There's, oh, absolutely. there's so much. Yeah, yeah. There is so much. Yeah. And there's a, there's actually, I was listening to a, a, another message today, but it, they were talking about gratitude and how um, 
people who are thankful that exhibit gratitude take time to be thankful mm. they actually you you are healthier really you know? yeah because Makes you're, sense because you're focusing on as believers especially like we're focusing on the good things god has done everything is from him and yeah. any every good thing is from above um but one thing that the study found is you have to be specific really you can't like don't be general like wow. be very specific Wow. Be very specific about what you're thankful for. Like I said this yeah. morning, when the Lord was meeting me, I felt my heart lift yeah. when I was being thankful for the gift of life. Yes. You know? Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. Really Be good. Specific. So we'll just pause right now. Lord, mm -hmm. we just ask you mm -hmm. to bring to our remembrance the things that we need to be grateful for before we move into another day in preparation mm. for Christmas or whatever, another holiday or thinking about the close of this year and a new one, we just ask you to make us mindful. Let that posture just move us into a place where we're like, wow, God, thank you for every little thing. And even help us to name them out loud and to share that. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Hey man, just had to pause right yeah, there, bro. Yeah, no, we got to. Yeah, we got to. You, you were telling to pause. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we had Pastor Zach's message, Blind Bartimaeus, which was really cool because it was like the second or third time that I got to hear it. As he said, right. he shared it he with his staff. It staff. And uh, Mark 10, really good. Mark 10 is loaded. If you got a chance, just read it. The whole thing is good. Uh, but here we are with this blind beggar mm -hmm. and so many things. I mean, we could just spend all day and just where he was sitting and why he was there. But you have all these different pieces. Pieces You have Bartimaeus sitting where he's supposed to sit. You have him crying out, son of David, have mercy on me. So there's a recognition mm -hmm. of this glorious person who's here, the Savior, the one who has all authority. And then you have him running, as Pastor Zach was saying, coming to Jesus, the blind man going, throwing everything, his, throw his coat off. And then... You get to this interesting place where Jesus says, what do you want? Right. What do you want? So I'd love to break these things down yeah. with you and just start yeah. right right from the get-go. Yeah. I, I, I loved how uh, Pastor Zach, he set the stage about um, focusing in on the brokenness mm. and how there was a place for the brokenness. Um, it, it made so much sense, but it's something that I think when I read, when I would read the story, I wouldn't focus on that. Like yeah. I would just, I would keep reading and getting to the healing. It's right? true. But you have this blind man and he's sitting at the gate. He's sitting at a place where, where people are, are walking by. Yeah. Um, and, and it's true. There is a place for brokenness. Because just like we were talking about before about suffering, mm. we all know that suffering and brokenness exists. Yeah. But we want to categorize it and in a way to cope with it, mm. we, we put it in like these boxes and these positions. Yeah. So this way, it's like it's a way that I can fool myself or, or, or remove myself from the brokenness because I'm keeping it separate. That's true. And it's like, okay, yeah, this guy's blind, and okay, he can't work, but he can sit at the he can sit at this gate, and mm. uh, people can can give him money. Yeah. I think for us in our society, like there are beggars like that, but it could also be like, oh, he's disabled. Um, we got to get a disability check, and like, okay, good, he's all taken care of, even though it's not the optimal living situation right right um and it's not you know and, and i think especially like recently when we've you know we had these migrant families you know coming right. to our community like we're we're embracing them mm -hmm. as the body of christ and not just allowing them to fit into the category of brokenness That's and good. what and and what the world what our state system has set up for them right? yeah because the state's giving them shelter right the state's giving them a, a, a meal um, and it would be very easy for us to be like, okay, great, they're 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 okay, mm. but we're called to more, right? But it it involves us stepping into the brokenness and breaking down that barrier. Well, I really love that you're bringing this up because you can see that the crowd is pushing against this man, saying, no, 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 stay quiet, yeah, stay quiet, be quiet. Know he's your place. he's too busy. Yeah. Know your place exactly. And as Christians, like you said, as believers, I even think to what you were sharing a few minutes ago, sometimes it's challenging for us because we would almost like the compartmentalized box to say, okay, something's happening. But really, when everything comes off and we realize like, wait, that's not the best state right. for that person or that group of people, like keeping them in that box or that pocket or that street line is not the best place. We got to do something. 
And even when we move, this is where I think we see sometimes too many churches or organizations can jump on a social justice bandwagon where it just becomes about something that God really is doing, but we made it just a social justice issue Mm -hmm. rather than realizing there is something specific that the Lord wants to do. Yeah, we could bring change, Mm -hmm. but it could be deeper that God wants to do. We really need to just kind of like, I liked it, Bartimaeus, (laughs) the crowd. It's really interesting because the crowd plays such an interesting role. At first they're quieting him. Yep. And then when Jesus says, you know, let him come, they're like, okay, he wants you. It's like they shift gears. Well, because the crowd's always focused on the show. Yeah. And at that time, they're focused on, you know, Jesus and where Jesus is going. And like, we want to see what he's going to do. And it's like, oh, Jesus is interested in this guy. Great. Yay, buddy. Come on, get up there. (laughs) Get up there. Let's see what's going to happen. But, you know, Pastor Zach, like he brought up, um, he says like, he's, this was a line that he said. He said, just because our culture provides a safe place for our brokenness doesn't mean that we should stay broken. Right. And then he's saying how, um, there's something else he said, uh, for as long as there is something visibly broken in somebody else, it makes it harder for us to see the brokenness in ourselves. Right. And, and I think all of that is true when we just focus on the physical things. Mm. And this is why it's so important that we don't just live based on what we see. It's living from that spiritual place of like what's happening on the heart level. Mm -hmm. Because when you, when you live from that place, then you don't just see a broken person uh, who, okay, they've got the physical shelter, you know, shelter foods taken care of for the day. They're all set. No, if you're living from the heart level, then you're seeing, oh, wow, there's a deeper brokenness. That's right. And then actually what you might encounter, like I, I remember this when I uh, was in Moldova with Wally, we went to this woman's house and she was, she was very poor. Um, and my initial, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking like, how should I be praying for her? And, and, and you go to the physical things first. Yeah. Like, oh, there's this, she lives in this very poor apartment. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of things. That's what your brain goes to first. But what I believe I was discerning in the spirit was, no, it's not that. Like, she has everything that she needs. Like, I take care of her. It was like, you know, like, that's what God was showing me. And it, mm. it's, it's, it's not just the, it's not a physical thing. Like, we need to be seeing primarily from the heart. And then, yeah, like, it does play out physically, but it's not always, the, we, we get brokenness wrong. And, and they, we, we triage the, the issues in a wrong way sometimes. Well, this is so good because this is exactly what's transpiring here. You have somebody who's physically blind. Yeah. And so what's the end result? The end result is, well, you can't work because you can't see. Right. So if you sit by the gate, you'll be able to collect alms or get you know freebies as people pass by because they'll be compassionate. Right. And that he could have been left alone. He could have been left just like that, but something within him rose up from what he had been hearing Mm -hmm. that, wait, my life could be different. Right. And this is where you're saying we actually do have to see with the spiritual eyes. Um, I think there's so many movies that point out some things sometimes like, hey, that's actually not what I need. What I need is deeper. Correct. We're looking, we're treating symptoms sometimes rather than getting to the root of the issue and the problem. And and, and that that particular woman, her faith in God was so strong. Mm. Um, And it was a testimony to a friend that showed up to her house that day. And her friend became a, a, a Christian during our visit. Wow. Because of this woman's perseverance and her faith and her her her, just her her courage and just how calm she was and she she persevered despite her her circumstances but god took care of all her needs yeah you know and and and, and, but we have to see it through that lens and it, it humbles us it does because if it's a physical problem, then it's like, okay, well, I, I'm in a, I have more means. Now I can provide something and I'm good, mm. right? I've done my job. I've, I've, given, I've given the volunteer day. I've given the money to this organization that helps provide a physical need for, for, for these people. Yeah. But what ended up happening is in that, in that setting, I came away feeling very humbled mm. because this, here you have this woman who lives with, a lot less. She uses two canes. She walks two hours to go to church. Wow. And yet she is happy and content and 
God provides what she needs. Mm. And I have a, a much easier life by leaps and bounds. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting what you're what you're raising here as you're talking. I'm thinking about just the the focus on the external. So you we we tend to think as Americans in Western culture that circumstance actually dictates joy and happiness. Well, joy is a fruit of the spirit. Right. We have access to that whether we feel it or not. Mm-hmm. We actually have access to joy all the time. Right. Happiness, sure, is circumstantial, you know, but the joy that comes from the Lord. Yeah. I mean, Jesus suffered probably more than any man. In fact, the scripture says he was marred more than any man. And yet the scripture also says that he was anointed with the oil of gladness more than any. So clearly there can be joy in the midst of our suffering. James says, count mm-hmm. it all joy when you're going through various trials and fiery trials. I'm thinking of Nick Vojcik as you're talking here oh, yeah. and uh, just considering like you might look and I remember when he talked early about trying to take his own life and his dad found him in the bathtub and um, you know, his dad just talking to him about how his, he has value and he has purpose. Mm-hmm. And this man has gone to transform people all over the world. And he knows like his arms and legs, his hands and feet, they're all coming in heaven, mm-hmm. you know, and and just it's truly amazing. I think we could just kind of put people, we can put ourselves, we need to not just see externally, right. we can be putting all of us in a box and saying, mm-hmm. this is where you're supposed to be. Right. As we met people at the altar on Sunday, some of it was just mindset. Yep. This is the mindset that I've accepted. Yes. It's like, no, you don't have to stay there, which brings us to the point of there has to be an exchange. Mm-hmm. So Bartimaeus throws off this coat and goes running to Jesus. Yep. He knows there's something more than just change in the jar. He wants something deeper. He wants something more than just getting through another day. Right. But then when he gets to the savior of the world, <laughs> mm-hmm. he has this all challenging question, which I love watching the way Jesus works sometimes. What do you want? Mm-hmm. Can I do for you? Isn't it obvious? Yeah. And yet Bartimaeus is not taken by it at all. He's like that I may see. Right. Right. Well, because again, it comes back to the mindset mm. and and he he recognized who Jesus was Jesus son of David so he's making a connection to the messianic prophecies he knows who Jesus is um and i i really really um appreciated and it, it i i felt personally uh, awakened by it when pastor Zach was saying how you know the culture is fine with Jesus as a cliche yeah and like Jesus is the reason for the season yes. and and i was thinking about that line when we say Jesus is the reason for the season, we're not even making it about Jesus. A lot of times, wow. it's like when we say that, it's like, no, I'm saying Jesus is the reason for the season because I feel attacked as a Christian. Wow. And it's like, so is it about you or is it about Jesus hmm. in that situation? Because Jesus understands that as Christians, we're going to be attacked. Oh, yeah. But I think sometimes like w- when it happens, like we're we're like, wow, like again, going back to the suffering thing, it's like, I shouldn't why am I suffering for being a Christian? It's like, no, that this is part of the thing. So, so why do we water down and, and, co- and cooperate with the world and allowing Jesus to become a cliche? Yeah. And, 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 and pastor Zach said, he's like, no, it's Jesus can change your, can change your life. Jesus wants to save you. Mm-hmm. Like, why do we, why do we water that down? Yeah. Like, no, we should come out and say that, say who he is. Right. Right. It's a really good point. He absolutely can. I'm totally I'm just bonkers right now thinking about this idea of cliche and how much it plays into everything that we're doing, the Christianese and all these different things. I'm even thinking about what he was saying, like, just be quiet. Just say something more meaningful. And and (laughs) and I'm saying to like, definitely, you know, fight, fight the culture wars. I'm not saying not to do that. I'm just saying, don't just remember to make, keep Jesus the main thing and don't water down who he is and, and allow him to, to go before you in that. Yeah. And, and don't, you know, it's, it's a personal, it's a personal walk that we have to check with ourselves, Yeah, but you know, allow Jesus to be who he is and don't water that down. Don't hold it back. Well, because when we water it down or when we quote unquote, try to water him down, we are actually removing his ability to do what he wants to do. Right. We're not letting him. Right. He's willing to. Right. He is willing to, just like Bartimaeus. What do you want? Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be one thing. I think this is the way we should approach it when we're talking to people, individuals or cultures or whatever. Right. Um, Hey, what is it you need? What do you want the Lord to do for you? Right. We're not putting the onus on us. I can't produce anything for you, but Mm -hmm. what do you want Jesus to do? And I I remember uh, my pastor used to say, 
hey, listen, people are okay as long as you're talking about God. The moment you start saying Jesus, he's the defining line. Right. People either yeah. jump in with you yeah. or they jump away from you. Right, right. So I think we got to let Jesus be, mm-hmm. and we are bringing people to Jesus, just like this Bartimaeus comes running to Jesus. So what is it you want? And I, I really appreciated, I'll let you share what you got there, but I really appreciated how this really moved into a faith message, stirring yeah. our oh, yeah. hearts, stirring yeah. our hearts again to say, what is it that we want? Are mm-hmm. we afraid to ask Jesus? I think about the things that Jesus said when he was here. He said, listen to his disciples, up until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Mm-hmm. You've asked, you, I've been right here. You've asked nothing in my name, but now you'll ask of the father and you'll receive that your joy may be full. And I wonder, I've been having the Lord deal with me lately as to, okay, are you asking? And if you're not asking, why are you not asking? Because you right. don't believe that I'm going to provide this for you. So it's a lot of nuances there, which is why I think it's interesting that right. Jesus had to ask Bartimaeus, what do you want? Right. And this is, and this is where it comes back to um, the mindset mm-hmm. and, and not living from from the place of brokenness. Yes. Not living from our brokenness. Because there is a there is a sustenance that went along with Bartimaeus's brokenness. It's so true. Like he was begging. He got by. He got by. So he was making it. (laughs) He was making it. Yeah. So the question is like, does he want to continue making it? Because Jesus um, he, he probably heard stories of Jesus, you know, feeding lots of people, right? Yeah. So you could, you know, do I want Jesus to just, you know, sus- they just give me what I, yeah, just, that's a good so point. I can stay in this broken place or do I, or do I ask for the, the, the real thing, calling out who he is, his wow. character, his being, wow. where he is the savior, he is the provider yeah. and he meets me in a deeper way that doesn't just, um, you know, you know, keep my brokenness going. I know he can. He can heal me. He can. Now, uh, there are situations like the Apostle Paul where he has this thorn in the flesh, and mm-hmm. we're not told what it is. And I, I think that it's important that we don't always know exactly what it was, hmm. because then we can apply it to when, like, why isn't my prayer being answered? Because that's that is something else that comes out of yeah. this message. Is yeah. you can pray the prayer and it's like well i'm praying the thing and i'm asking the hard question i believe who jesus is like how come this isn't happening yeah but what to say my grace is sufficient and my power is made perfect in weakness yeah so it's good again but again what happens in that kind of a situation is god still shows up as the savior and the sustainer Mm -hmm. so that's really what we're what we're getting at yep um but i think sometimes like we can approach it from a place where it's like, okay, God's just going to sustain me and I'm not going to ask this, what I see as a hard prayer. Yeah. But I, that is, again, that mindset is, of I am broken, I will stay broken, yep. I cannot grow from this place. And that's where the enemy wants to keep Correct. you. Correct. Correct. You see it. You see this whole passage. Again, I think the reason why I feel like you're, we're both lost for words and I think the reason we're lost for words is because... So much of it is a reality to each and every one of us. There's an introspection that's coming yes. from this message of like, I don't even know how to talk all this through because it's right. literally happening simultaneously right. to me in the soul and the spirit realm right now where I'm like, wow, God, there's so much that I need to learn in this message of like, I do have to ask you the big things. I have to not be afraid. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you are a good father. Right. I also have to trust your answer. I have to right. trust you and your timing. And all these different things. And like you said, if I don't see it, I mean, this is where we go all the way to Hebrews 11. Right. And we see that the patriarchs, the scripture recounts that they died in faith. Right. Not having seen the promise mm-hmm. presently. Right. But seeing it afar off. Yes. And so there, there are some things that we have to just hold on to and trust the Lord. And again, none of this is easy. This is why we need the mm-hmm. spirit of the living God yeah. with us each and every day. Like right. you said, Second Corinthians right. 9. To Paul, my mm-hmm. grace is sufficient. My strength is perfected in your weakness. Right. And, and the, the, it starts the same way. So don't get hung up on the answer. It starts the same way. Yeah. Asking it's true. the prayer, it's answering good. the question, what, what are you believing for? It's good. And praying that. And then Jesus will show up. And how he does that, well, it, it, you have to ask. Yeah. 
I think a lot of it boils down to if we just have to begin somewhere today, it would really boil down to that mindset. It's like, okay, Lord, I'm willing to think about Bartimaeus being at that gate for so long. Lord, I'm willing to check this reality. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to say this doesn't have to be my position, my station anymore. Right. I'm willing, the woman with the issue of blood, I'm willing to risk it all. Mm -hmm. We got to think about these things here. These are real people. I'm willing to risk it all for the sake that Jesus will answer my prayer. And that is Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whoever comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I'm getting excited mm-hmm. and encouraged just sitting Absolutely. here talking Absolutely. about this. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, any closing thoughts? Because we, uh, we didn't push it, but we got 35 today. Oh, that's Last awesome. week was a 45-minute okay, cool, cool. show. So great show, yeah. Yeah. great time, great dialogue. Again, I like that we weren't like, all of, we, we're giving everybody a model. We're modeling what a Amen. good dialogue yeah. would look like. Yes. <laughs> we're yes. a little lost for we words. Hope. We hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, man, why don't we but pray? But again, it's about the dialogue that you're having with the Holy Spirit. That's, and that's right. And that's any questions or any um, you know, areas of concern or uh, areas of exploration in your soul that uh, have been woken up from mm. hearing this, this dialogue or from the message or whatever's happening in your life right now. Um, take that to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to put all those pieces together for you. Yeah. Okay. Because He is our our counselor. He is our counselor and He's our comforter. So He doesn't He doesn't just help you figure out your problems. He comforts you through your Amen. problems. Amen. And no humans can be able to do that. That's so true. That's true. Well, why don't you pray for us today, brother? Okay, Father. Thank you uh, that you are who you are. And so, Father, as we come into this um, season of Christmas. May we uh, be reawakened to uh, the Savior that you are in our life, that you've been in our life, um, and who you want to be for uh, the people in our lives, and that we would um, proclaim your name as Jesus, Son of David, Jesus, the Savior of the Mm. world, the one who saved us, that we would not hold back in our testimony and that even in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our brokenness, uh, we would just be open and honest with you and with each other about what it is that we are believing for. Because we know that you bring every good thing to completion, and it is your will um, that our brokenness will be, will be made whole. Yes. And, and we, we believe that in Jesus' name, and we know that. And so we pray uh, that we would see that happening even here on this broken uh, world where we walk, um, that we may be testimonies for the people around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, folks, I'm Kurt. And I'm Luke. And that's The Breakdown. We'll see you next week. You're giving me up.